Well, joining me now to discuss more on what's happening on the ground in Ukraine is Defence and Security Analyst Professor Michael Clark. Good afternoon to you. Uh, so more attacks then overnight. Uh, Michael, what can you tell us about them? Yes, I mean, more attacks uh, on Ukraine, again, some deaths in Kiev. What was interesting last night from a military point of view is that some of these attacks were carried out by ballistic missiles, Iskander missiles, which the Russians fired uh, from, um, uh, from the northeast part of, of Russia on that part of the border. And uh, the Ukrainians say they shot all of them down, all ten of them. Now, normally, there's no defence against ballistic missiles. They're just too difficult to defend against with what the Ukrainians have had. But now they've got Patriot missiles. And so it looks like the American Patriots are working very well in Ukrainian hands against ballistic missiles. They claim they shot all ten down. I think that's probably true. Otherwise, we'd see more evidence of them if any of them had got through. So although it was another night of attacks in Kiev, the Ukrainians did pretty well, and it shows that the, the Patriot batteries are a problem for the Russians if they're going to keep this up. Meanwhile, uh, there is more fighting over the border now in the Belgrade area, in uh, Shabinka, uh, uh, Sh Shabakino in particular today, um, the groups of these militias, these Russian national militias who fight for Ukraine, they're irregulars. So there's the uh, uh, Russia Volunteer Corps, as they call themselves, and the Freedom for Russia Legion. And they seem to have gone over the border again for the second time in about 10 days. And they've attacked this administrative building uh, in Shebekino. And they look as if they've put a series of probably grad rockets onto the roof. I mean, the way those fires have broken out, it rather looks as if a flight of rockets has hit the roof. Um, which won't destroy the building, but it certainly uh, damaged it, and it's pretty visual. And so, and that is the administrative building, because you can see all the Russian flags in the foreground as that car whips past them. And reportedly, there is now fighting in Belgorod itself, in the city of Belgorod. Um, we don't know, we haven't got that confirmed, we don't know how serious it is, but it's certainly a lot of a certain amount of panic, and Russian border forces and troops are engaged, it seems, with these militias, who are again, for the second time, over the border, um, I suspect that they'll, they'll withdraw pretty quickly this evening, leaving behind uh, quite a lot of evidence of yet another incursion and fighting on the border area. What about within Ukraine itself? What's happening on the front line there? On the front line, this is interesting. We've been following this for a few days now. The Russians are... They've put, the Wagner fighters are coming out of Bakhmut between now and the uh, end of this week, really, the 5th, 4th and 5th of June. They say they're going to be out of Bakhmut and they're being replaced by other forces. But the forces that the Russians are putting into Bakhmut to replace them are these irregulars, uh, these volunteer battalions. And now we hear that the Chechens... Uh, Kadyrov's Chechens are going into Bakhmut to take up those positions. Now, the Chechens, again, the, there's not many of them. There's only about 7,000 at most. And they're not really particularly good fighters. They're not, they're not good at sort of going forward in a conventional sense. So, again, that tells me that the Russians don't expect to have to do any more fighting at Bakhmut because they own it now and it's strategically fairly unimportant. It always was. However, at Kramina in the north and at Av uh, uh, Avdivka, at Marinka and Vuladar in the south, that's where the strategic importantly, important areas are. And I think if we do see fighting in the Donbass soon, we don't know if we will, but if we, dis if we see this offensive beginning in the Donbass, it'll almost certainly be north and south uh, of Bakhmut. And that seems to be what the Russians think when we look at the sort of forces that they're deploying there. That's so interesting. And, and meanwhile, diplomatically, there's a big meeting going on in Moldova at the moment, isn't there? Yeah. All the European leaders meeting there. President Zelensky is there. So what's your take on that meeting? Yeah, it's a huge meeting. And the British Prime Minister's there as well. They've all gone. There's 47 governments represented. Everyone but Russia and Belarus are represented there, including the EU. Moldova is the second poorest country in Europe. It's very small, tiny little enclave. It used to be part of Romania. Uh, and it's uh, three million people. And uh, about half a million of that three million people are Russian separatists. And they occupy what, the, what the, this self-declared Transnistria Republic. And this is a, a republic on the eastern side of the Nistra River. Uh, there was a civil war there in 1992. And so this area, this, this is sort of a sliver here, uh, east of the Nistra River. And this area, they call themselves the Transnistrian Republic. There are 1,500 Russian troops in that area, supposedly peacekeepers. And the United Nations has twice told them they're illegitimate and get out. The Russians just ignore it. And so the Russians got troops there. And we all thought when this battle started, when the, when the Russians got west of Mykolaiv, which we thought they would do, get towards Odessa, they'd keep on going, they'd link up with Transnistria, and Moldova would, would collapse as a, a state, it would collapse into civil war, fall into the Russian orbit. It hasn't happened. Maria uh, Maya Sandu, 
who's the uh, Prime Minister, very tough Prime Minister. There she is in the middle, in the green, yeah. hosting this great diplomatic jamboree. She's done incredibly well. Elected in, in 2020, she's stood up to Putin. She's a really tough cookie. And out of the weakest state in Europe, she has helped to manufacture, with Zelensky there, a sort of diplomatic triumph. And so this whole European security community are discussing all European issues but they're doing it in Moldova. And this is a sign of the support that they feel they want to give to Moldova. We thought it wouldn't exist by now, but they're doing all right. Fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Uh, Michael, as ever, thanks very much indeed.